Hello, and welcome to Alonzo's first video, response video to Anthony R.R. R. Mills and his short shrift that he gave me in a comment I made on his blog regarding Mark, Mike Rinder. I am Alonzo from Alonzo's blog. I was in Scientology for 16 years, in anti-Scientology for 15 years, and I've been eight years out of both, writing about each. And so it is interesting to see a guy like Anthony R. R. Mills with a YouTube show where he says he has a background, he studied political science in college. So I kind of understand where he's coming from, and he's a shit disturber, just like me. And that term, shit disturber, is not meant as an insult. It's meant as a compliment because provocative commenters make people think. And this is what we need more than anything in this community. And so I'm going to be talking about Anthony R. R. Mills' uh, response to me in a comment that I made to an online poll he gave. So here we go. Here Alonzo's discussing Mike Render. A lot of people use the same phrasing that Mike knows where all the bodies are buried. If one has actually watched Mike speak much, he has spoken many, many times, perhaps even on Aaron's channel, about his work with law enforcement and the FBI, filling them in on everything he knows about Scientology. Okay, gonna stop right there. So <clears throat> first of all, um, Mike Rinder ran the Office of Special Affairs when I left Scientology in 90, 1999 and 2000. Mike Rinder and his juniors hired private investigators to follow me. He got me fired from my job. He called my 83-year-old father and told him I was a criminal on the run from the law. And my dad was not in a good state of mind. At the end of his life, his, his wife of whatever, 40 years had died of Alzheimer's and he spent the previous 10 years taking care of her at home. And so they, Scientology knew and Mike Rinder knew, like the main reason I got involved in Scientology in the 1980s was to fix my relationship with my dad. So they knew that I valued my relationship with my father. And here's the thing. Scientology absolutely helped me to fix my relationship with my father and to turn my whole family from a dysfunctional family where we spent all of our time undermining each other to a much more functional family where we spent a lot of our time supporting each other. So again, Scientology and Mike Rinder had gone through all of my auditing folders. They knew everything that I had ever talked about in Scientology. And I had probably 40 PC folders, pre-clear folders. So lots and lots of hours of auditing. And Mike Rinder used that to destroy me, or try to destroy me. He tried to destroy our family and it didn't work. But I have been watching Mike Rinder since before I left Scientology. He was a, he was a speaker and I wrote about a OSA project I did against CAN in Chicago. And, you know, Mike Rinder ran all that. So I've been watching Mike Rinder since before I left for more than 25 years. And one of my most important things that I was looking for was once Mike Rinder appeared on the internet claiming that he had left Scientology and started speaking out against David Miscavige, I watched him very, very closely to see what kinds of things he said and what kinds of things he did not say. And so the whole of my comment is actually about what Mike Rinder does not talk about. As far as the FBI goes, um, Mike Rinder has changed his story over the years. Again, I've been watching very closely. Mike Rinder has stated that he went to the FBI and told them everything when he first got out. Since he made, he made those initial statements that everybody just swallowed and believed, he has since made other statements regarding this. One of them was that he went to the FBI in Los Angeles with Marty Rathbun 
to tell them. Uh, Marty Rathbun has since said that the stories that they told the FBI were all featured on the aftermath in the first season. And that Leah had asked Marty Rathbun to be her Mike Rinder and, and, my, and Marty Rathbun had turned her down. Now, my point in, this is to Anthony, my point in your, um, on your channel was to show that Mike Rinder has said a lot of stuff, but he's never talked about any criminal activity. And I've written extensively about that, why that might be. There are many different possible explanations for why that might be, each having a likelihood greater than zero. So Mike Rinder does talk a lot, and Leah Remini has exposed the abuses of Scientology to a wider number of people than have ever been exposed before, and that's all good. But one thing they studiously ignore are criminal acts that would bring criminal indictments. And so my comment was on that, and you ignored that and kind of gave a, a duped response in defense of Mike Rinder about how, how much great work he's done. By the way, regarding that story of going to the FBI, uh, I had a very good friend who had very, very good reasons to contact the FBI about Scientology. And she called Mike Rinder and asked him who he'd spoken to at the FBI because she needed to speak to them and she needed to find some agents who were genned in. They, they understood the deal with, with Scientology. Mike answered this person and said, I can't remember. And then she said, oh, okay. Well, um, how about what, what city did you meet with him in? And he told her, I can't remember. So you have to understand, while it appears that Mike Rinder has done all of this exposure of Scientology, what Mike Rinder has actually done is what's called in the uh, public relations world and actually the intelligence world as a limited hangout where, and you can look that up, it's a very, very useful concept to be able to see what Mike Rinder is doing. And he is studiously avoiding anything that would bring a criminal indictment and mostly talking about things that others have already exposed. Now, <clears throat> many of the stories in the first season of Scientology in the Aftermath were original. Uh, they were people that I had never heard of. I'd been out by the time they started their first season. Um, I had not heard of Aaron Smith Levin. I had not heard of, of almost all of the people who were on Scientology and the Aftermath in the first season. And I was, I was ecstatic about this. This was the greatest thing ever. But what I wanted to see was actual exposure of criminal acts, such as the Scientology murders made to look like suicides of Kyle Brennan, of Shelley Miscavige's mother, Flo Barnett, and of the uh, squirrel, the Scientology squirrel, who called himself the pilot. His real name was Ken Auger. These are three deaths that when you look up the evidence that was gathered at the death scene, you, you see that they were not suicides at all. They were murders. The evidence actually shows that they were murders. So one of my biggest things about Mike Rinder and Leah Remini is that they never talked about any of these in three seasons of their, of their show. In fact, they were going to talk about Danny Masterson in their first season and they had interviewed Jane Doe number three and they kept putting off airing that interview. And there's a bunch of details that came out uh, later after Tony Ortega lied about why they pulled those episodes. Basically, they were being threatened by Danny Masterson's lawyer. The, the thing is that in real journalism, people talk about suspected crimes all the time. They don't, they don't have to shy away in order to try to not be sued. Then, of course, they had their own 
podcast where they supposedly had the cuffs were off and they were able to talk about things that the restraints of TV wouldn't allow them to do. And that's a direct quote from Mike Rinder in promoting the podcast. And yet, even on the podcast, they don't talk about Cal Brennan, Flo Barnett, or Ken Auger, or any of the other murders, Scientology murders made to look like suicides. Uh, and of course, Mike Rinder has had a blog since I think around 2011 or so, where he's posted every day and he's never talked about these things either. So the point I was actually making in that my comment was an important point, which you failed to address because I don't know, like there, are the, there is such a thing as a dupe of Mike Rinder. And I believe that Leah Remini is a dupe of Mike Rinder. I believe there are many people who are dupes of Mike Rinder. And I'm hoping that Anthony R.R. R. Mills is not a dupe of Mike Rinder. Over and out.